So next weekend or week is the last of Christ life and crucified life. <clears throat> really, we only have, this is only the ninth one. Oh, I've been, out of, I've been out of town a lot. I still feel like I'm out of town. <clears throat> All right. Colossians 3. Gracias. <clears throat> Colossians 3, 1. Let's begin there. We'll, we'll just do the first three verses. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Uh, for ye are dead, and your life, for ye are dead, and your life is hid. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. So, we saw a, a lot in relationship to chapter 2. Um, let's, let's just look at a few verses there, and then we'll go back to 3 again. Colossians 2, verse 9. <clears throat> For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. This last part, um, verse 13 that we just read. And you, being dead in your sins, and, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. <clears throat> so what you've got is you've got the fruit mentioned first, you being dead in your sins, which is sins is the fruit of uncircumcised flesh. And, and the dealing that is mentioned here, hath he quickened together with him? Hath he made alive together with him? Now, if we could really just begin to grasp that. I mean, I, you know, for me, probably uh, the two worst enemies to really seeing the Lord and being conformed to his image is um, the doctrine of the truth instead of him as the truth. And um, really great spiritual terminology that is not him, but just great terminology about him. Because we can get wooed with terminology, we can get wooed with <clears throat> teaching, we can get wooed with uh, good doctrine, uh, uh, no, but no matter how good the doctrine is, it's Christ. It, we are quickened together in him. We are quickened in him. We are, um, you who were dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, with him. And that's there is no doctrine, no teaching. Even, even that teaching right there does not, is not a, a, a stairway to the reality of quickened. The reality of quickened. In other words, being quickened together with him is what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> it's, 
I mean, it's good stuff, but it is not good enough because it's not him. And everything that he's been saying here, for in him dwelleth all the full, complete in him, in whom, um, uh, all of these things are uh, a him. It's H-I-M to Paul. It's, it's Jesus. It's the Lamb of God. It's the one with whom we have become one. Or we only see this as a work he did 2,000 years ago. And while he did do a work 2,000 years ago, if, <clears throat> if all of that was totally finished in the sense of being finished, then what's the point of leaving us down here? And, you know, but we, we need the reality of this. We need the spirit breathed reality of this. We need to, we need to, to, to dis discipline ourselves for being naughty and just re receiving doctrines about it and just receiving terminology that, you know, you know, can, can make, could make this place feel higher than others we're not higher in fact in the truth if we're dead if we're dead with christ we're lower and because we're also buried with him Amen. that's us that's us now we're one with him which is him so <clears throat> so that that reality um to to live to live in the death and resurrection of Christ, to live in it, to live in that reality, to, to have that uh, constant reality to you. Because if it's not, then it's us for him. It's us for him instead of him. And our, our focus is in the earth. Didn't we read that? Don't make it in the earth. Well, we're, that's where we seem to be drawing from. We're, we're applying all those things to our life in the earth instead of our life that hasn't appeared yet, been revealed, been unveiled. We're, we're on the right track and on the wrong track all at the same time. Um, as uh, 2 Corinthians 4 says, when the heart turns to the Lord, when the heart turns to the Lord. Okay, so I know that, I know that we're all trying to get our heart to turn to the Lord, but in a certain sense, we're still doing that as separate. I want my heart to turn to you, Lord, wherever you are, you know, <laughs> trying to find him. You know, I want my heart to turn to the Lord. <clears throat> well, when it turns to, um, for you are complete in him, uh, you see, it's, it's the him of the thing, not the end. You don't know what that means until you really understand him, until the spirit has breathed him to you. You're just trying to be in something that is ethereal or doctrinal or, you know, uh, um, terminological. Yes, yes, I made that up. You folks probably don't know that. I do stuff like this all the time and drive your daughter crazy. <laughs> Actually, it doesn't drive her crazy. Um, so, so, so what we read in three was, you know, live in the, for you're dead, live in the death and the resurrection for he which is your life. He's... He which is your life, he which is my life, is my resurrection. And he said that. I am the resurrection and the life. They're going, cool. Uh, you know, but remember what Martha said. Now, I know that he shall, talking about Lazarus, I know he shall be raised at the last day. I, and she's got the doctrine of resurrection all down. I, last day, he will be raised. He's a good guy, you know. And Jesus stops her and says, look, you know, I am the resurrection and the life. Um, and I'm, for us, since the, since the resurrection, since he rose, he's supposed to be the resurrection and the life for us right now. See, 
not in the earth. Remember, didn't it say, set your affection on things above? Not in the earth. You know. And um, not in the earth. How can we do that? For you're dead. Or the one that you love so much made you dead. <laughs> For you're dead. You are circumcised with the circumcision not made with hands by the circumcision of Christ, by his death. And so, you know, take that personally. He made you dead. <laughs> you, know, you don't make you dead. You don't, you know, I've often said you, don't, you can't crucify yourself. You might be able to drive nails into your two feet together and get one hand up there, but then it's kind of hard with your teeth to go, you know, you can't do it. You cannot crucify yourself. You're crucified with Christ. And he made you dead by taking you to the cross. But the beauty of that is not he made you dead, but him in him. Not just in, but him. This guy. Not the beauty of in him. The beauty of in him. The beauty of, you know, looking at the in part and kind of pointing off to him. He's a real person. He's alive. He is still Lord. But, but he's more than Lord. He is the, the, the risen expression of the Father now. And we are his members well, let's make sure that we catch all of that then. Um, well, let me hold up on that just for a second. So we, we want Christ. We want him as our life. We want... Um, the cross to be effectual, not terminological, not doctrinal, not something that we can hold in our head but is, does not override our nature. Um, we want, we want the cross, okay? Well, what you have to do then is make his cross more real than your life in the earth. Amen. Okay, now it already is more real to God. He's not having a hard time with this. You know, the father's going, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of okay with this. You know, I'm, it's been a couple of thousand years now. <laughs> Could you hold, tune into this reality. His cross more real than our life in the earth or our, or our lack of it. Set your fix on things above. And that's where you are dead with him and risen with him. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> How can you do that? How can you do that? Go to Jesus and say, do it. He'll say, I did it at the cross. I made you dead. Yeah. With me. I mean, that was one of the key things for me as I began to try to grasp all this is, is as far as the Father, as far as God is concerned, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this thing is settled. The old creation has been put away. And we have a new life, but that new life isn't just Christ, it's in him. And we don't think of ourselves as the body of him now, the true body, the, the, the members of him. And, and the verses that we'll read in, in chapter 3 after the ones that we stopped at really start spelling this out. I mean, it starts, you know, getting into the way God sees it instead of the way that 
terminology and teaching seems to present it. But we have to look at it. We have to, we have to really look at it, you know. You, you gain this by true death, not spiritualized death. Okay, okay I'm dead. Are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, <laughs> you know. Okay, well, but you are dead. But you can't just say, well, I am dead, therefore I'm going to say I'm dead. Does that make sense? You have to embrace the death. You have to see that if he died, I died. And that was the thing that I kept going through when I was getting this. Okay, he, he died and I was in him and therefore I'm dead. But I seem to do things still that say I'm not dead. But he died and I was in him. And if he died, then I died because I was in him. But I still seem to do things that it's a conundrum until we, we just settle into, you know what, I'm going to stick with that you already did this and I was in you and that I want you to make that real in me now. When Christ who is your life shall appear, then shall you appear with him in glory. Again, that verse is talking about Christ who is your life being manifest to you, being revealed as it were, revealed in you. Um, and until that happens, your life is hid. You don't see him. Now, he's not trying to hide from you. Your life is hid with Christ. He's not trying to hide from you. It's just that we're blind. <laughs> we don't see the truth as the truth, as spiritual truth. We see it as spiritualized truth. Okay, I, I have to say I'm dead because I would be calling God a liar. And there's some truth to that. But not, but not I said some truth, not I have to say I'm dead because that, but rather I'm dead because in him I'm dead. Because the, how do I put this? The, the him of it, it's all about the him of it. It's not even about the work. I mean, think about it. Think about it. It's not even about the work because, because in him uh, we were crucified. In him we were risen. In him we were buried. It says that. We read that over in chapter 2. In him that's already done. So we're trying to get the, the death, and then we're trying to get the burial, and then we're trying to get the resurrection instead of the him. Right. He is that in us and to us and through us. He's the length and the breadth and the height and the depth. By him all things consist he is before all things, and on and on and on. And we, we know those scriptures, but he's not that to us. We say, well, that's theologically true, or that's true in God. But how does that become, how does that become real? How does that become practical? It has to be taken out of just being a doctrine. Lord, I don't just want the truths of this. I don't want to be able to spout it out back to other people. I don't want to do it because when I do, I find at times I get prideful or I feel like I'm superior because I'm teaching something that somebody else hadn't heard. All of those things are the very opposite of actually having embraced it. Or maybe even better said, having it embrace you. Because Jesus embraced us. Jesus embraced us and said, I love you. I'm going to take you into death. <laughs> and then I'm going to bury you. And then I'm going to bring you up as one with me. And from then on, me, Amen. not the teaching of what I just did, is going to be your life. But it will be effectual now because it is true in him, you see. So when you're, when you're embracing the HIM of the thing, then... You're on the right track for all of the things that were already accomplished to be made manifest. I, I started to say real, but they're already real to him and already done. But manifest in our mortal flesh, which is verse 5 there in chapter 3. 
So, um, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Okay, <clears throat> mortify, put to death your members. Put to death your members. All right, so where is that? Yeah, I just jot th jotted this down just before I got here. You have earth members and you are his members. Which one of them are you going to live according to? That's really what it's saying. I mean, that's really what Colossians is trying to get across. Uh, especially this third chapter starting with verse 5. Mortify therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth, not on things on the earth. Um, to mortify those things, does, how do you go about that? Well, he said mortify the members. He wasn't talking about your phalanges. He wasn't talking about that. He's, he's talking about that stuff that works in you that is not of him. Mortify what has already been put to death. But he's saying more than that. He's saying, as if Jesus were saying, because he does, the scriptures do say this, you are my members. My life is in you. You are more than saved. You are more than delivered. You are more than that. You are one with me, and, and, and I am the key to the life flow because I am the life, way, truth, and life. I am the fountain of living water. I am all of that. And so if we're, if we're really trying to focus in on the in him as the concluding factor, I think that can get you off somewhat it is true that it is all in him, but I think that until you really understand that that's the one that I am, and I am the, the, these members are not my members, I am a member, and we are members of his body and of his flesh, of his bone. That's, what, that's who we are. That's who we are. So that's the part of the deal that I was trying to... Uh, jot down and, and uh, sort of hone in on. I wrote, you are first in him, but just above that I mentioned that it's him, not just in him. But you are first in him. You are first not in the earth. Okay, well, all right. How do you do that? I mean, if you got a job and you got family or you got this and that and you got to do all this stuff, how do I not be in the earth? Because he's your life right now. He is your life right now. And all that was settled, the cross being where you live, I live there, the, the resurrection being where you live because all this is him for us now. You understand that? All of this is him now to us, you know? Not, I'm trying to live the resurrection life. Let's see, uh, that'd be Jesus. <laughs> you know, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering. It's all related to him, and that's finding our place in there. And, you know, Paul said, in him we live and move and have our being. But how, how, how much of that do you think got across when he said that? Wasn't that on Mars Hill when he said that? Those fellows are probably going, okay, we'll hear you later, much later, you know. In him we live and move and have our being. In him we live and are motivated, and our being is based on that. Okay, so that's, that's what Colossians is about. That's what he's trying to get across. Remember, I, I told you, the first, like the first part was about trying to just set up the as it were the doctrine, but it's more this is the truth as laid out so that you can read it. And then now he's getting into, okay, that's no longer the truth so that you can read it. That's fact. That's what happened. That's it all happened in him, and he is now the fulfillment of that. So, you know, you say, well, I just, I wish my flesh were dead. You know, just so you know, so does he. But anyway, that's, 
you know, <laughs> in fact, it is dead. And he's not worried about it as much as you are because if the father looks down at us and then sees all the junk we do, he's got the assurance of just looking, you know, to his right hand and there's Jesus and they're complete in you. You know, I've heard the old story. When you stand before God and he says, what, on what basis should I let you in? Well, I was, I went to church. Oh, you didn't live as the church. Okay, this is going to be a harder test than I thought. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, hmm, you know. Well, I, I gave offerings. You were supposed to be the offering by my son. Wait a minute, is this a trick question? Is everything going to be him as the answer? <laughs> and the father would say, yes. Yeah. And that's supposed to be not real, that he was an offering 2,000 years ago, but he lives in you to give his life. Uh, what did Paul say? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, Christ, liveth in me. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I am crucified, nevertheless, uh, you know, but nevertheless I live, yet not I, Christ. It is, you, you almost never hear this, but it's the, the incredible reality that after we embraced the fact that Jesus died so that we could have life, Little did we know that the life we got was the life of the Lamb who gave himself for me, and loved me and gave himself for me, so that I could say, I'm crucified with Christ, but I don't live, Christ lives. I'm crucified, so he will live. And that's the life I live in the flesh, and I live it for the one who loved me by giving himself for me. You see, it's like it just keeps going. There's, that verse is never ending. If you really grasp what he's saying, so the, the, uh, all the things that we seek, all the things that we desire of the Lord, he's the, he's the, the spring, the fountain of all of that for us, to us, in us. And apart from that, we're, you know, we're like, we're like all of the rods of the, of the other men of Israel who were the leaders, you know, and they questioned Aaron and said, well, we're just, we're just as smart as Aaron. We're just as good as him. We have leadership skills, too. We've got skills. Um, so what does God say, okay? Get your rod that represents your authority and you all, all gather them up and let's set them in the Holy of Holies and let's see what happens. See if any of these things can live in the Holy of Holies. <laughs> and so next day they go in and gather them up and you know, here's your dead stick. Here's your dead stick. <laughs> here's yours. And then Aaron's is like got branches and almonds that are growing on it and everything else full of life. It can live in the Holy of Holies. Well, that's where God's lived the whole time the Holy of Holies was. It has to be his life in our little branch that is connected to him. You know, when we recognize that, then it's like, you know, we, you know, we can either see if you think separate, there's just no hope. Really, I mean, if you think separate, I'm not talking about in, not thinking in. I'm thinking if I think separate from Jesus and I'm still trying to get to him on a certain front, then it's, it's like a, a, a donkey. Have you ever seen, well, none of you have, but maybe some folks here, the stick with the donkey, uh, with the carrot on the string in front of the donkey and the donkey's going after it, you know, and it keeps him moving well. You ne he never gets to eat the carrot, by the way. I would think you'd feed him the carrot every once in a while so he'd keep going. <laughs> 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 you know, after a while, he goes, this is stupid. 
<laughs> they, 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 you know, I may be a jackass, but I ain't stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you are first in him, then live in him. I'm in you. I'm not me, I'm already dead. I'm in you. I'm in you. I am one with you. You, you, you are the, the answer to all this. I'm not trying to get it all done to please you. You are the answer of all this. Right? You see why I said that? Because he is the good pleasure of the Father. I do always those things that please the Father. Okay? Well, I don't. Okay? So, which am I going to choose? Me or him? His life will fulfill. Fulfill. And see, that's what it says. I mean, that Jesus is not just the keeper of the law. He fulfills all, all the, the commands, all the things that are required. And, of course, that is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, and strength. Live in him. Live as in him, not in the earth. Remember the him of the spiritual reality, not just the spiritual reality. You think of him. You, you're in union with him. Your heart is with him. Your thoughts are with him. Your affections are set upon him. Your, do you see that? I mean, it's, it's you know, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good example of that. I don't know, maybe you're, you're far away from someone you love and they send you letters and you all write love letters back and forth and all this kind of stuff. And then they, they finally come home to you and, and uh, they get to the door, you know, and she's going, where is he, where is he, you know? Or maybe it's better the other way, but you go look through the house and you find, find her in the bedroom reading the love letters and he steps in, he, she looks up at him and goes, just a minute, I'm reading. Okay. I mean, this is what we call not good <laughs> in, a re in a relationship. <laughs> okay. Well, if it's not good in one of our human relationships, it's really not good in the relationship with God who settled all this stuff. And we, we throw the letters away or whatever, or you put them in a box and you say, you know, whatever. But your heart, yeah. your heart is there. I, I, I want you I don't just want to be in Christ. Yeah. Amen? I mean, that's the main thing that I felt like the Lord wanted me to share tonight, to try to start breaking through some of the things that we have that are so good, and yet they're so not him. Yet. 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 And so we're pursuing, and so we break it down into the doctrine of Christ in you, and you in Christ, and uh, the Christ life and the crucified life. Well, it's all him. You understand? It's all still him. And if your heart is saying, you know, I, I seek the Lord. What did the prophets say? What did the Lord say to them? Seek me and you'll be found. I'll be found of you. And, and you hear in his heart in all of those verses that say that kind of thing. You hear in his heart, I'd really just like you to be with me and let, let that which is mine fill you and flow out of you to the glory of the Father. So it's like, well, you know, I'm sorry. I can't really get into this right now, Jesus. I've got to study this book on in Christ. Same story, see, same story, same deal. We're going, I don't really have time for you right now. I have to read this book about getting you. <laughs> okay. Well, I read books. I do. I'm, I'm pretty much an avid reader. Um, I love reading my own books. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding with you. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I 
I don't listen to my own teaching either, which should teach you something. <laughs> if I don't listen to it, you shouldn't. <clears throat> uh, seek what's above. Okay, well, that's him, where Christ sits. Well, what's where Christ sits? Well, Christ. We would say, well, a chair. No, I mean, you know, what's that over there where Debbie sits? Well, there's a chair. No, there's Debbie. <laughs> you know? It is him. It's him over and over. So um, I was talking about earth members and his members. Wow. That was really good when the Holy Spirit gave that to me because that's really what a lot of Colossians is about. It's either in him, or meaning we're his members and we have the flow of his life, or we have these members and we're just living for God on the earth, which he said. So don't, you know, think, seek those things which are on the earth. What a great contrast. I mean, what a great contrast. His members are earth members. <clears throat> So, we are com the scripture says we are complete, may I say it a little differently, we are complete plugged into him. Now, you know why that has a little better ring to it? Because our minds with you're complete in him, we've already got that one figured out. That rolled up, nice little, you know, scroll with a, a nice little you know, tie around it and a little feather and, you know, it's up there, oh, I got that. But you are complete plugged into him and you are incomplete when you're not plugged into him. Wow, that'll make you want to, you know, double check your, your insurance policy. <laughs> it's, it's the difference about being plugged into him. It's the difference about being with him and so that which is in you I want in me not uh, I want the in Christ message to work in me good luck with that you know complete, complete when plugged into him he says not this and this and this but the body is Christ Remember that in chapter 2? So I wrote the thing that some people cringe at. Stop trying by outward action to be what God wants. That's, that's Colossians. Stop trying by... Oh, okay, well, you know what? We'll read some scriptures here in a minute to remind you. Um... And I just jot it down real quick, quick. New moon, Sabbath, touch not, taste not. Stop trying by outward action to be what God wants. He's saying, and, and what we saw, he, he laid it out really well in the second chapter. He's, he just goes through and he just says, you know, all this is, is in him. Your completion is in, plugged into him. The, all this is happening as a result of him. So stop worrying about new moons and Sabbaths and doing all that stuff and touch not and taste not. You can't do this, but you can do this and da 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 da. And let his life dictate life. body is Christ. <laughs> that's his answer. I mean, that's a pretty cool answer. He goes, to, well, it's not this and that and that. The body is Christ. I mean, that's, you know, you're, it's him and you're his members. You're not Christ, but you are the members of his body. So the body of Christ means this is your answer. We're his body. Then we say, we, we pray that special prayer as his body, live, <laughs> live in me, manifest, show forth, hallelujah. 
All right, let's try a couple of scriptures now. You don't have to turn there, just, just listen. Rooted and built up in him. Rooted. Okay, rooted in what? In him. Rooted in what? Him. See, I'm going to take the in out. Rooted him. Body, him. Me, Tarzan, you, Jane. <laughs> Trying to help you get this. <laughs> um, rooted and built up. And the word built up is the word edified, meaning you are, you are fully um, initiated. You're fully, uh, you're full of all what, I'm probably going to read another scripture that will say that. Let's see if this one goes on to say it. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. You're abounding. You're, there's an abounding going on, but it's not doctrinal abounding. I've, re I've written seven books on the in Christ theory, and you know I know more about it than anybody. I'm sure you do about that theory. <laughs> But do you know the him of in him? Do you understand that as soon as you, you put that little word in, that's the connector between him and you, and then pew, then you have, he can fill you, use you whatever way he wants to, but your trust is not in yourself. Your trust cannot be in yourself anymore because for you're dead, see? And he, he's... He just says that over and over. Again, I guess we'll read some of those uh, verses. <clears throat> another, let's see, yeah, another one. The traditions, the tradition of men and not after Christ. Okay, well, I think, <clears throat> you know, I think we have some traditions around here. I would hope that they're after Christ. Um, I'm sure that we have some that are not. I really don't, I can't think of any right now. But, and if I did, you know, we'd have to stand Jim up here and put a few more bullet holes in his. <laughs> Just kidding. How's it feel to get all the stuff, all the flack? <clears throat> Just kidding, Jim. For in him dwelleth all the fullness. For in him dwelleth all the fullness. I just want the fullness. Well, in him dwells all the fullness. I know, well, won't you give it to me? Do you, do you see this, the, I started to say stupid. Do you see the retardedness of that? I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't say that. <laughs> Strike that from the record. <laughs> but it's just, it's, it's on a level of, of, well, it's just totally missing the, the thing, you know. Um, in him dwelleth all the fullness. Give me all the fullness. I already gave it to you. Where is it? It's in me. Then where is it for me? In me. Now do you see why I use that word? Because it's downright ridiculous that we can't just go, okay, I'm in you. You know, we connect in, you know. I'm not in the world in that sense. I am my members. Uh, on this earth are not the guiding force in me anymore. You, the, the reality of what you did, but more importantly, you. But the reality, you know, that, that I'm crucified, that, that I'm buried, I'm raised all in you, and circumcision, all of that has taken place in you, but it's in the you part that I cleave. Not put all that other part up in my brain, but with my heart, I cleave. Yes? Right. Yeah. Caitlin just said, that our trust is in the one, not in the oneness. Well, 
the oneness is kind of like the the way we're looking at it is here's him and here's us and we've been grafted in and we have it's very tenuous, the little threads that we have connected to him. And I'm, I, my trust is in the oneness, but it doesn't seem very good, you know. Uh, just forget that. It, my trust is in you, and you said I'm in you. And I, wanna, I want that to be real. I want you to be real. I don't want oneness to be real. I want the one to be real. Um, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, because we're his body. It's, it's, that, it's that strong. And you are complete in him which is the head, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increased with the increase of God. He's saying, you're complete in him and he's the head. Okay, that means that all of it flows from him. The example of that is uh, Psalm 118, is it? The, like the, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil poured on the head of uh, Aaron that flowed down his beard, that went down on his garments. So God's using that as example of, of oneness. He's saying then that which is on him and as it were his, by virtue of high priest or whatever, flows down to us because we're the body of him. Okay. All right. Well, you know, the way we are, we're, we're like at the kneecaps going, well, when's that going to get to me? <laughs> you know. And, of course, the next going, woohoo! And you're going, hello, there's, there's some more of us here. You know? <laughs> the flow isn't the, rea uh, isn't the reality of it. The flow is the reality as it reaches you. You, you embrace that. You embrace him and all that is true of him. And then, okay, so we talk about identification. Oh, gosh. I just think that doctrine's been all messed up, you know. I mean, I remember years and years and years ago when I was in Costa Rica teaching, and they asked me specifically to come because they'd heard some of the things that I teach. And so, so I get up there, and they've got all these people there, and I get up there, and I start talking about uh, this reality of, of uh, oneness with him and what was termed in Christ. When I sat down, I sat in the middle of the two guys that invited me, and one of them leaned over and said, oh, we already know all about being in Christ. He said, well, we thought we were going to get some other stuff. <clears throat> and I said, uh, I didn't, I, I just, when I finished, I didn't teach about being in Christ. And Oh, yeah, he said, we already know who we are in Christ. And I said, it's not about knowing who you are, but knowing who he is. And that's the one that you're one with. And you've made it all about you and who I am now in Christ. I'm this and I'm that and I'm da-da-da-da. No, you're not. You're dead. Of course, I got up there and I said that. You know, and just said, you know, I'm sorry, folks. You all have been fed a line here, you know. Of course, uh, I will tell you that the, the guys that brought me in, we ministered together for years and years and years. But I said, you know, it is not about who you are. It is not about what God did for you. It's what God did in Christ, and you've been joined to him, and it's all true only because all fullness dwells in him, and he made you his body. But you've turned it and twisted it and made it all about you. You say, why'd you do that? You, you know, you probably discouraged those poor people. Actually, it, it, it worked. It worked. They, for years and years and years, had me coming back and sharing. They said, this, this is, they just said something didn't ring true with the other way it was being explained because it just kept being about us. And it's not about us, folks. It's about him. And we, if we understand that, 
then we quit worrying about us. And we quit worrying about what? Our members which are in the earth. They're mortified by being dead already. But then you have to, you have to apply that. I'm one with him. Seek those things which are above where Christ is. Not down here with these members, but as, a, as members of him up there. Not, uh, and so he's, he's saying there's a problem with the Colossians not holding the head from which all the body. Do you get it? Not holding the head from which all the body. Remember Psalm 118? Was it 118 or 19? What is it? It is 133. Okay. 133. Let that go on the record. Let it be <laughs> placed on the record. Psalm 133, the flow, he's, this is talking about the flow right here, not holding the head from which all the body would just be in the body. Well, it's a, um, uh, who I am in Christ. Well, that's talking about the body. You're not holding the head from which all the body. I mean, it's right there. You know, it's right there. And that's what he was saying to them. You've made you the, the center of it, and as long as you're the center of it, you will forever be seeking it and will never find it. But when he's the center, all of a sudden it all comes together. All of a sudden, all of a sudden in him dwelleth all the fullness, and, and uh, uh, he is the head from which all the body. Having nourishment ministered. It's in that same verse. All the body having nourishment ministered increaseth with the increase of God. Okay, it didn't say you increase with the, the depth of the great thing that God's made you. You must, he must increase and you must decrease. So this is talking about the increase and the decrease, if you will. <clears throat> Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or of a new moon or of Sabbath, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body of Christ. There it is again. But the body is Christ. But he's saying, stop doing all that stuff. Stop doing outward things thinking that's pleasing me. I want my son and you're his body and let him come out of you. Let him be the life of, of his members. Let him be the fullness. <clears throat> So, I mean, it's, I mean, I just love this wording, which are, things are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ. It's, that settles it. To him, <laughs> that settles it. He's just a, but the body is Christ, so don't do that stuff. I remember reading that when I was younger, and I go, what kind of answer is that? <laughs> you know, I mean, because I didn't, you know, it's like I'm looking for him to say, well, um, you know, it's not the, it's not the Jewish way, it's the Christian way. And instead of a Jewish Bible, you use a Christian Bible. Instead of the Star of David, you use the cross. Really, all that's gonna make any difference in your spiritual life? No, <laughs> but being the body will be, <laughs> from whom all fullness receives nourishment coming down. <clears throat> All right, so just a few more scriptures here. In whom ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Now, how does that apply to chapter 3? See, that's the beauty of this. Is chapter, this is chapter 2 that I'm reading. I told you that chapter 2 would tell you how to do it, but chapter 3 will tell you how to apply it. In other words, what, what it means in chapter 2 and then how to apply it. So he says, mortified, therefore, your members which are on the earth. I mean, you can't get any more plain than that. Okay? So here he says, he's saying the same thing now. But he's using a little more theological terminology. In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Here's the kicker now in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Mortify, therefore, your deeds in the earth. This is how you do it. 
in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, you do it by the cross, by the circumcision of Christ that took place when you were in him, when he hung on that cross. Wherefore, if you be dead, <laughs> you see that? To him, it's just real. He's, it's, Colossians can sound real complicated, but I see that with Paul, it's not that complicated at all. He tries to set forth the teaching part of it, and then he wants to br bring us right into the practical things of it in chapter 3. And he says, okay, circumcised with the circumcision, what does that mean? Well, somehow, a long time ago, 2,000 years ago, da 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 in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, wherefore mortify, therefore, the deeds of the flesh. For ye are dead. <laughs> For ye are dead. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ, um, from the rudiments of the world, you're dead to the rudiments of the world. I mean, you're, you're from it. You are from it. If you be dead with Christ from, from the rudiments of the world, why is thou living in the world? Are you subject? So what is he saying? He's not saying, stop doing it, keep living in the world, but don't let it get you down. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, this has already been settled, but you need the life, you need the hymn of it. You need to, to, to connect in. I mean, it's one thing to sit in the service and you know, really hear something good and just maybe even go to an altar and say, oh, you know, Lord, please. It's quite another thing that in the middle of your day, this hits you and you just cry out, whether you're driving or, you know, I mean, I, I, I've had it happen more times than I can tell you, driving down the road and pull over because I can't see because I'm weeping because I want the Lord so much because I desire this. I don't want the teaching. I want you, Lord. I don't want to understand even. I want you. And I want it in a oneness way that I don't even have to understand, if you understand what I mean. Because it's by life. It's, it's like my arm doesn't understand how it fits with my shoulder. It, it probably doesn't have any clue how the blood veins flow and do all of that. It just knows that it has the life, one life, the same life, you know? I mean, one, this arm could say to this arm, well, I, I got a better life than you. Maybe it'd be the right arm if you're right-handed. I've got a better life than you. If you're left-handed, you say, I got a better life than you. And the head would say, you both have the same life. Shut up. He would never talk that way. So, But Lord, here's your servant. Use me. <laughs> we need to just stop letting those things roll. We let them roll. One, let's see, for you're dead. And your life, it didn't say, and one day he'll be your life when he appears. <laughs> and your life, he's your life. He just needs to appear. He just needs to come by revelation. The unveiling has to take place. Like in 2 Corinthians 4. And the heart turns to the Lord, the veil is rent, and we are changed into the same image. What image? Him. It's his, it's his image imprinted into us. His nature, able to flow out of earthen vessels. For you're dead in your life. You're dead, but you have a life. You're dead. But you have a life. You're not dead without life. It just hadn't appeared. Is hid with Christ in God. Sounds pretty secure to me. Sounds pretty secure to me. And I love the, in these verses in Colossians, it says, and, um, and we were raised up, and then it says, and, and he was seated. I'm going, we're going up 
but he's going down and he's being seated and we're being seated in him. We're being, we're being, we're being. So we're going to have to stop living by teaching. We're going to have to stop living by um, things that we understand and start living by letting this mind be in us. Let his mind just be in us. Let his spirit, let his nature. And if it was all, yeah, let me just, I'm trying to quit here. But what, have you ever seen anybody or heard stories or met anybody that you thought, gosh, they, they seem, don't seem to know anything about what we share and stuff, but that person just like lives Christ. They're selfless and they're poured out. And they're, you ever met somebody like that? And you go, how, how can that be? I mean, did they somehow get my book? No. <laughs> no, for God's sake, no. They got the real Lord. And they and I, I, I've talked with people like that. And I'm just talking and looking and listening and going, oh, my God, I would give anything to have all of that. I think I'm cluttered, you know. I, I think I'm cluttered, and they're uncluttered. It's just life and nature to them. And, and then you realize that in all of this, we can become cluttered. We can become Martha. We can be cluttered about many things. I know it's a different word. I'm just using it because I think it fits. We can be cluttered about many things, but Mary hath chosen that one thing that shall not be taken away from her. You know, And you don't have to understand how every scripture fits and all of that. It, if the Holy Spirit reveals that to you, good, praise God. Let him do whatever he wants to. He does stuff with me all the time. But I, but I, I want to see the life of it. I don't want to run, run with it and go, hey, look what I saw. And somebody go, oh, that's just, that's incredible. You are an incredible man of God. <laughs> and I'd have to say, no, I'm not. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you that you love him and you put us in him. You didn't just have him die so that we could chase after him like the people did when he walked this earth. We're his feet. We're his hands. He touches through us and not just touches us all the time. We carry him where he wants to go, not where we want to go. We're his members and not our members in the earth. Father, may the Spirit of God quicken the spirit of life and quicken that fountain of living water to come flowing out of us. Rivers, rivers of life, not rivers of teaching. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Kelly's going to share next, and then we'll, for now.